I was at work and I was chatting with my boss. It was about 5.15 that afternoon and I left on my bike to come home. And And four to five minutes later, as I came off the freeway, a people later ran a stop sign and T-boarded me. I knew it occurred, and then I woke up. And I was lying in the middle of the road, and there were two paramedics there, walking to me, trying to save my life. When you're in that state, someone holding your hands is one of the most comforting things you can ever feel because it's almost, you're caught between, you're, you're caught in this, in, in the state of not wanting to leave the world. And your connection back to the world is the warmth from someone else's hands. When you have the amount of broken bones that I sustained, the fat from the marrow leaks into your bloodstream, which then takes to your lungs and shuts your lungs down. So come 2 a.m. Monday morning, um, when my lungs can process the fat is when I went into a coma. And so that's when I went into a 10% chance of survival. And for the next, essentially, three weeks, they had no idea as to whether I was going to survive or not. I wasn't able to read stories to my girls when I first came out of the hospital because of the damage to my voice box. I tried telling that to an 18-month-old Try telling that to an 18 month old where they're asking you to read a story and you can't read a story and she doesn't understand. When you're consistently facing the battle of pain every single day, consistently facing the mental anguish of just trying to do the basic things, be it sleeping, and then trying to function the next day becomes a big challenge for, for anyone that's gone through the trauma that I've gone through. I've come to an understanding that, yes, that path has depression, it has, I'll have to have surgery, um, I'll always have medical intervention as time passes. This has happened to me, I can't change it, and I'll make the best of it that I can, even though it's put me in such a terrible position.